Hey everyone, and thank you so much for joining me today on my YouTube channel. I'm your girl, Robin Nicole, the inspiration specialist, and I'm wired to inspire you to live your authentic purpose. So guys, I want to talk to you today and keep my word because last week we were on uh, my community page and I posted a picture. You should be able to see the picture. I'm going to try to put it in this video, but if not, you can just go to my community page from just, you know, go back a few posts. And it was a picture of a horse and it was tied to like a plastic chair. And it basically was saying that, you know, are you know, sometimes you are what's holding you back and it's essentially all in your head. So I asked you guys if you wanted me to talk a little bit about it and you said you did. So I wanted to just give you the revelation that God had given me as words of knowledge, you know, so to speak. It wasn't necessarily prophetic, but it was some things that God was showing me when I did connect with that, that I feel is important. And hopefully it can help you in some capacity as well. Um, the first thing I'd like to say to you is simply this. Although that meme was funny. And it was meant to just make you think like, man, sometimes I'm just not doing things that I need to do. What I want you to really, really understand about how God views you is that whenever you don't see yourself the way God does, you will find your state, yourself in a perpetual state of situations like that mentally. That entire picture was describing a mental state of mind. It basically is saying that you can have all of these excuses and have all the things and everything could just be this, 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 and this, right? And you are not allowing yourself to expand from that place. And then it turns into, I can't do this. I can't do that. Y'all, I have done this for decades as as accomplished and successful as many people think that I am in some regards and respects. There are other areas of my life that have just been garbage because I was just like that horse tied to that chair. I'm going to be transparent and tell it. I'm not ashamed. My whole point is, since I'm called to live my authentic purpose and my purpose is to help people get into their purpose, I genuinely want to be clear when I say, in order for you to not be the manifestation of what that picture represented, you are going to have to do some tough, tough self-evaluation, okay? In addition to that, the thing that I want you to pay attention to, I'm going to give you a couple of tips to give you some confirmation or to affirm what you've kind of already been knowing about some things maybe you're encountering in your life, but you're not really trying to address I'm going to tell you a couple of things that are, that should be some red flags and you should be able to know, oh Lord, I'm doing this. I probably shouldn't be doing this anymore like this. Okay. Number one, if when a person brings it up to you, 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 you're trying to hear what they're saying, but you can't wait for them to shut up and say, I know that already. What? That is the number one red flag. One of the, one of the biggest things I have struggled with, especially in my early adult life was being defensive. I am extremely, extremely um, different now. I can't say that sometimes it does not try to come up and rear its ugly head, but I went for years being so defensive. I mean, it was, it was to the point where I was losing good, good situations you know what I'm saying? Because of my defensiveness. And what I learned that even when I got faced with situations where people would come at me a way that I wasn't comfortable with, like recently in the last couple of years in my life, because I had about two of those situations where I was like, eh, well, really three, right? The difference is <clears throat> both, both times, my state of mind in the past when I was defensive and then this other time when it was more like let down your defenses, and instead of you responding and responding in a defensive way, I'm not going to say it was more about me being on the offense, 
But it was more like just be quiet and hear them out and receive it and process it versus being extremely defensive. What I discovered, though, is that that part doesn't really matter (laughs) because whoever you are encountering, you are not encountering yourself. Now, people say we mirror people, but I do believe intrinsically we are who we are and we can see a portion or a piece or a similarity of ourselves and someone else. But at our core, we are who we are. Whatever work we have done, that is the work that we have done. You will only see a semblance of that in another person when you are connecting and it is aligned. Now, whether or not you align with the bad part of them (laughs) or the good part of them, hey, that's subject to whoever you're dealing with. But a red flag is when God is trying to pull you up to a place to show you like, hey, listen, (laughs) I'm trying to keep it 100 with you. Okay, like. You're not hearing me out right now, son. You're not hearing me out right now, daughter, because you kind of caught up. Okay. I'm trying to show you that you don't have to have an answer. And even if they're repeating it, you know, you don't have to say that. Me and my brother would get into that, get into it about that all the time. We still do sometimes because he likes to tell me stuff repeatedly. And I'm like, I don't need to hear that. Stop telling me that. And he's like, yeah, just, just let me say it. Just let me say it. (laughs) Excuse me. That annoys me. But I still do it. I still, I've gotten better, but I don't know if I'll ever do that. It might be a sibling thing. Who knows? But I think it's important that when you are coming into the realization that something you you may have been blaming other people for for a very long time, it's actually your problem. And it is something that you could have fixed because it's all in your head and you've been holding you back. That is not going to feel good. Just needed to take a second for that. It's not going to feel good. I know somebody right now was listening to me and there's a litany of things you've been doing. You've been doing things a certain way. You handle things a certain way. You have a certain mindset. It's what you say and it has to go. I can guarantee you, you ain't going to get much further in life like that because God is shaking a tree on a lot of people. He is snapping people back into the actual reality they need to be in and not the reality they've created that everybody has to bow down to. That you, God can't get no glory out of that. He genuinely cannot, y'all. I'm not making this up. Again, I can tell you countless times in my life, you know, when I was just so detached from reality and just not realizing I just always had like a weird excuse. Like, <clears throat> it's interesting because at where I'm at now, I just know how I am. You know, I... I just know how I process things. I know how I respond to things. So it's kind of like in this space, I mean, it, it's a good thing because I'm fully realized in terms of how I am right now based on what I've experienced. So now it's not about I'm doing this wrong or I'm doing that wrong. It's, sometimes it becomes more about your communication style and their communication style is not, <laughs> y'all not on the same page. And one thing I'm going to tell you, too, while God is, is really showing you about this whole thing, about things being all in your head and you are the one that's holding you back. You really need to pray about how you communicate and just ask God to teach you how to respond the way he wants you to respond. I can tell you right now, once the light bulb goes off and when you go and look at that place in your life where you feel like you can't ever seem to get an answer. Right there is where God is going to start showing you where you can probably do some things a little differently and you've been blaming God for it. I know some of you don't like that, but it's just the truth. And if you're going to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, it is going to require you to completely crush your ego and completely humble yourself. Because what you will find out is sometimes the thing that you have passionately been ranting about, you are absolutely unequivocally wrong in the eyes of God. In real life, you might be right on point. But let me tell you something about that little horse that's tied to that chair on that meme. If that horse is stuck in that space and has no idea that it has the freedom to move around, 
But in the space that it's in, it's looking around at everybody else, all the other horses that's passing, and it's picking those other horses apart. And it's basically looking at those horses is to say, well, you're you the one that must have the anointing because I'm stuck over here. I can't even do nothing. And you over there barking and fussing and screaming at them. You know, this horse is looking at them like, hey, look, <laughs> you know, y'all this, y'all that. You basically touching God's anointed. What you don't realize about when you hold yourself back, you start to you you can not everybody, but you can start to do things sometimes that make you look at people sideways because you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing from a false idea that's not even true. It's not even true. So once you pay attention to those little things that like if your ego rise up or you have this this drive to just I got to get you together and I got to tell you, that's not God. Trust me, I know it all too well. <laughs> I've been on both sides of the coin. I done did it. It's been done to me. God don't have nothing to do with either one of them things. I can tell you that right now. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up and I'm going to give you all these things to just sit with. Okay. I'm just going to ask you three questions. And they'll be rhetorical on here, but I think it'll be wise if you just take them and sit with them and bring them back to God and just see what he said. So number one, what in your life have you been waiting on God to do? And you see nothing. You feel like you have done every single thing that God has told you to do. And you see absolutely nothing. Now, I can I can bet 99.999% a billion of y'all who's single and waiting on the kingdom husband, you're going to say it has something to do with a husband or a man or a woman. But let me tell you something. I'm, I'm going just, to just give you a bonus on this one so that you don't even consider this one if you don't have to. Nine times out of 10, if you do not have the person in your life that you feel you ready to have is because God is, has just not sent them to you yet. Everything is not, you got to go find yourself first and get you get yourself together. Sometimes God has to wear other people. They have to learn from the experiences of, you know, knowing situations and being in different things. Like I just, I just believe that's a touchy subject. And I think we have a lot of women, especially really suffering in that space. And what God is calling you to do is serve. I've been serving for years and it took me years to start serving. Y'all got to understand, usually when it comes to a relationship or a person, usually at the core of it, other than other than it just not being God's time, it's you got too much energy on it. Even if you think you don't, you just have too much energy on it and you are not doing what God wants you to do. You are not focusing on what he wants you to do, whatever that may be. Some of you are waiting to do something because you think you have to wait for that man or that woman to get there. Listen, that is a red flag, especially if you feel like you've been doing that forever and you're not seeing nothing. I'm going to repeat this again because I don't want to be this to be misconstrued. Everyone's situation is different. I'm not telling you a right way or a wrong way. But what I am telling you is this. We serve a God of order. God chooses people and selects people that's already working and doing something. If you got your nine to five, or you got your business or whatever place that you are in in life. If you are waiting for someone to accompany you on the journey, make sure if you continue to ask God that before you ask for that man, you ask God for his message. You ask him for his message before you ask for that man. You ask God for that word before you ask him for that woman. Because sometimes that is what's holding us back. We think God got that, he 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 got a choke, got us in a choco and we got our legs and, and arms tied up because oh he don't want to he ain't release nobody. What's wrong with me, Lord? I'm so lonely. And you're like, girl, I don't have nothing tied on you. You just sitting there. I didn't tell you to sit in here and be a hermit. I might have told you to pray and fast for a season, but you better go live your life, girl. You better go do what you gotta do. You over here waiting for him to just fall out the sky. And I done told you to travel. You're going to meet him at the airport, but you don't want to go to the airport. You know, I done told you to do this. It, but again, it's not looking like the way you think it should look. So that was an example of our relationships. But back to that question, make sure that you are honest with yourself and you think about that thing that you just keep circling back to 
and you're not seeing a result. Nine times out of 10, there's something there. And if you are genuinely trying to change it, you got to start asking questions that you probably don't want to answer. And that's between you and God. Okay. Number two, and this is very, very important. Okay. Really ask yourself if you are holding yourself back. I just had to tell somebody this the other day. Sometimes you have to be careful not to be rigid. Okay? Here's the thing. I introduced them to something several years ago, right? And they were really rigid. Like, no, I don't like that. I only like this. I only like that. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Are you serious? Like, yeah, I don't. Okay, and I get that. You have the right to do that. I'm not judging that. I'm not tearing that up. But when I revisited with them about three or four years later, and I said, hey, you know, look at it. You know, you look at this. You like this? Like, try it again. They were like, oh, my God. Now they're obsessed. They get it all the time. And what they didn't realize was that was the same thing I tried to offer them before. But they, for whatever reason, no judgment, but there was a block there. There was a there was a rigidness there. There was a. A very abrasive, no, I don't want that. I I know. And I respect that. And I still respect that to this day. But the point I'm trying to make to you is this. It's not that when I circle back, I showed something else to that person or tried to offer them something different. But the difference was them. So this is a good thing. What it showed me was that there was tremendous growth. Because they went from having one attitude to having another attitude about the same thing. They went from hating it and saying it was disgusting now to absolutely loving it. So ask yourself, is there something that you holding on to? Are you being rigid? Are you being too hard on yourself? Are you being too hard on other people? Ask yourself what that is. Okay. Just, just see, just see where you land with that. And the final thing I want you to think about is this. If you are a person that overanalyzes and thinks a lot, that can land you in a whole world of trouble. God has given you, a, you have a spirit, you have a heart, and you have a mind. If you spend too much time in one or the other, you are not going to be balanced. If God wanted you to just be in the spirit, he would not have given us physical bodies. If God just wanted us to be in our head, then we would just be walking around with brains and no other body parts. If God just wanted us to take everything to heart, we would just be walking around with a heart. So I want you to really assess your level of how much you sit in your head. Because oftentimes when you are in your head too much, you overthink. And there's a saying that says over analysis causes causes paralysis. And some of you may be in a paralysis just like that horse was because you have overanalyzed a situation and you don't even realize that's literally not even it. In some cases, it's the exact opposite of what you said it was. But what happens when you are in your head too much, you can villainize people, you can make up stories, you can, you, you can start with one little idea and that thing just turns into hundreds of different ideas. You all over the place, you can't sleep at night, you're having nightmares, you got crazy dreams. Now you think your spirit telling you something about somebody. Now you think you shouldn't go there, you shouldn't do this, and none of that is God. You want to know why? Because when the smoke clears and all of that stuff is gone and you're not in your head, you're like, whoops, that's actually not what happened. Right? So give yourself some grace, number one. But secondly, please make sure that if you are a person who just typically sits and you you overthink because you really want to do things right. And that's usually why people overthink. That could be villainized. But a lot of times people just overthink. It, it could be a, a, a deeper trust issue. It could be, you know, multiple things. It could just be how they were raised and they had to be in survival mode. So they think to make sure they have everything they need. It just, it varies. But I want you to show yourself some grace for whatever the reason is and wherever you land. Because it's important to move forward. But I want to say this as I close. If it's all in your head and you are the one that's holding you back, that's okay. Because once you come into the realization of that, you won't do that again if you choose not to. So I hope and pray that after hearing this, you give yourself a chance to get to the bottom of it. And if it feels heavy, if it feels like, oh, you're aggravated, if you get defensive, just let it come out. Because that's just a sign. Those things have been put there by the enemy 
to keep you from getting to the truth. He wants you to be offended by things that you, you shouldn't even care about. He wants you to get mad and defensive about stuff that should, you shouldn't even think about. So let those feelings come up, get mad, go off, click out. And then once you, you settle down, the Lord will start revealing to you the next phase of this thing. So guess what? You'll end up from not being all in your head to not being held back to being in a space where you are fully realized and fully balanced and you can see the things the way God finally wants you to see them. I hope this message helped you and I thank you guys for listening. Make sure you like and subscribe. Go to my website, imwiredtoinspire.com and check all of the information in the description underneath this video and you can have all my offerings and everything that I have coming up right now. I got some freebies and all that stuff. Just check it out. And I will be back, guys. Stay tuned. I hope you have a wonderful day. I'm wired to inspire. I hope you are too.